Hello, divas and dance partners. My name is TV's Guy, and welcome back to the boss designs of Bloodborne. So last time, I hope you were ready to cry, because we went through the tragic story of Maria and the absolute misery of the research lab, a terrible place that I never, ever want to go back to ever again. So we're going to go back there, just in case I've missed some stuff by not fully exploring in there, so... Uh, okay. Let's head to the Lumenwood Garden and see if there's maybe 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 the weird um the weird dude who's been following me. Maybe he's here. Cuz like we've killed Maria, so that's usually like he usually shows up once you kill the boss, right? Well, he's not outside the door. Are you in here skulking around? Mr. Dude who knows stuff? No. Maybe he's back down by the door still. Like, maybe he doesn't move any further than this. We, sh we should go check anyway. Sunflower's a f creepy man. Like, they just are. They're just creepy flowers. Oh, he's there. No, he's not. Uh, they're just creepy flowers. They're just... Like, when they're a little tiny and squat, they're kind of pretty. Like, they look towards the sun. It's nice. But, like, when they grow to, like, 15 feet tall, and they do... Those mother those long, spindly ass mother with their big yellow eye. No, no, creepy, creepy, unpleasant. I have had more sunflower fields in my nightmares than I care to acknowledge. Okay. Oh, hello. Let's not do that, shall we? Let's not do that. A, a shield? I thought there was only one shield in Bloodborne. That was the thing, like, people some people told me, like, like, Bloodborne only has one shield, and it's a joke. An artisanal shield crafted with blue glass, originally used to safeguard the leader presiding over a sacred healing church ceremony, and later supplied to tomb prospectors, in particular those exploring the Labyrinth of Ease. The blue is fashioned after a lake, and the shield greatly reduces all forms of non-physical... Oh, it's a magic shield! That seems kind of useful. Probably run into some jerk throwing magic at me at some point. But I saw something. Hi, I'm not here. Oh, I don't know what you have there, but... Don't use it on me. Is that a stick? No, that's not... Oh, that's an arm. Oh, that's an arm. It used to be an arm. Underground cell key? Oh! Oh, 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 that'll be for, that'll be for, that'll be for, um, for, um, 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 uh, that'll be for, uh, yeah, yeah, behind, the, yeah, yeah, uh, it'll, the cells beneath the chapel, the chapel, that's the word I was looking, I was looking for the word chapel, I've kept seeing cathedral in my head. Hi, I've got your key. Yes, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Hey, buddy. How you doing? You should maybe stop doing that. It seems like that's maybe a bad idea. Dude? Bro? Are you not- you can't- uh, What? I can't even talk to him? Should I- End his suffering? What the hell? Reeks of item, therefore you must accept wrath. That sounds like it says I should kill- I mean, it's kinda not my style. Like, to just murder the guy for no reason. Okay, is there someone waiting behind the door to f me? No? I'm not taking chances. Oh, sh that's a hunter. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, it looks like a Harkle hunter, too. Can I? Oh, he's... What the hell is that weapon? I've never seen that one before. Oh, okay. Well, that works both ways. <laughs> I guess we're cheesing it.
Okay. No, no, I'll take this. I have hunters, man. They kill me all the time. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, well. <laughs> what a way to kill him. Do you have an item? Oh, church pick. So that's the weapon he had. Oh, is that a... Wait, is that a dexterity weapon? One of the old trick weapons of the healing church, a hunting weapon formed from one of the la of the giant picks that appear in old beast tales. The church pick initially serves as a large sword, but when transformed, functions as an extended war pick. In spite of its origins, it is a highly practical weapon. Ooh, stabby. For the moment. I do hear it. Oh, you're one of the church assassins then. Is that is that Fear for the church. And you're ringing that bell. Okay. Well, what? Really? Really? Okay, then. Right, so... Is he gonna invade me at some point? Is that what's being teased here? Is, like, he's gonna... He's gonna show up? Because he's a church assassin? Well, that sounds tedious. And now... Finally. To the fishing hamlet. Shut up for a second. I'm hearing other voices here. Are there other people around? I mean, it. Dangling upside down rune. Dangling upside down, you say? Am I reading too much into this? I mean, it does look similar. Okay, if I see more people hanging upside down that way. Oh, what the hell? Specifically, then maybe I'll come up with a crackpot theory. Okay, could you walk by the window again, real quick? I need to. What the freaking hell are you? Oh, 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 we are. F oh, this is definitely Insmith. Okay. Burble, burble. All encrusted with barnacles and... Right, so is the implication here that this is a Dagon village? Where the residents have... ...interbred... ...with the denizens of the ZC. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. I don't... whatever that is, I don't trust it. It looks like it has teeth or something? Oh no, no, that's not... oh, that's... that's maggots. That's maggots feeding on the... or larvae feeding on the corpses. Oh, hello. Hi.
Okay, well, they don't have a lot of health, at least. Ah, I should not have stopped to pick up a vial there. Okay. So, yeah, fish people. Sure is corpsey in here. Sure are a lot of those corpses being fed on by maggots. Sure is a lot of that going on. Almost as though it's intentional somehow. And not just, you know, neglect. Oh! 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 No, no, no! No, 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 no! No, 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 no! Wait, that was Kanehurst's... That was, that was the same as Logarius. That was like... That was like exactly the same magic that Logarius was using. Just, well, no, not quite exactly, because that that's mm. was purple, and Logarius's was red. Oi, stop that. But it was still, it was clearly the same sort of spirit, bound spirits magic. Can I knock that thing into the well? No, but I can probably climb in there, can't I? Yeah. What a thrill. When darkness and silence Okay, but do I want to climb in here? Oh, I know that. I know that singing. I remember that. Okay, nothing in the immediate area. Okay. Oh, hello! Do I need lightning damage to deal with you? Is that what I'm up against here? That's a big boy. I feel like I'm gonna have to dodge around him a lot. Oh, he sees me. Oh, he can do that. Where are you going? Oh, come on! Ah! Oh, you son of a... I got bored! Okay, so... Get him down to low health, and he'll summon a friend. Is that what we're dealing with here? Fine. Yes, I can. Now. Oh, I see. And you have my echoes, too. Do ya? What? Come on! The tracking on that thing. I thought I dodged it. Okay. But I think that's the play. Is to get there. Drag him far away from the other guy. And then, like, try and finish him off before he can summon him. Like, because he, he... It looked like he had to run over there and grab him. Or maybe the guy just drops down automatically when his friend is at half health or whatever, but... I don't want to fight them both at the same time, is the thing I don't want. Okay, so he has these long-range things that I really don't want to get hit by. Ah. And I absolutely do not like the... I don't like the timing on his attacks, it's really annoying! Yeah, see there? That one, like that swipe he has, that's specifically designed to, like, if you dodge immediately out of getting hit by his first two swipes, if you dodge, then you get hit by that. Okay, now he's gonna go get his boy. And I'm gonna try and kill him first. Oh no, his boy is already there! 
So the play here is obvious. We need to kill the guy who's low on health first. Because he does every bit as much damage as the one that isn't. Okay. This has got to suck, f*** you! Okay. So far, so not dead yet. But, uh... You have a whole new set of attack timings, I don't know, so... No! Let me down, let me down, let me down, let me down! Ugh. Okay, slightly less range on you, at least. No, come on! You. Rakuyo. Okay. Was that the only thing that was down here? Wait, is that? It is! Oh, okay. That's her weapon. It's literally her weapon. Hunter weapon wielded by Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. A trick sword originated in the same country as the Kanehurst Chicago. Only this sword fe feeds not of blood, but instead demands great dexterity. Lady Maria was fond of this aspect of the Rakyo as she frowned upon blood blades, despite being a distant relative of the Queen. One day she abandoned her beloved Rakyo, casting it into a dark well when she could stomach it no longer. Well, that kind of... Well, that kind of lines up with my reading a little bit, actually, because specifically... Because she was using blood blades against me. Like, I remember that pretty clearly. Uh, she was definitely using blood blades against me. That was definitely a thing that was happening. And that's the thing is like that she had these pure ideals that got more and more scuffed and corrupted over time. And eventually, you know, Eventually, she couldn't stomach it anymore. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh. Let's upgrade that. Because that, yeah, that's a full dexterity weapon. So that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. Better than the church pick. Wait, hang on. Are those fish? Oh, those are slugs. Or something. I mean, if they're fish, they're weird deep-sea fish. In fact, hang on. Wasn't there one of the... Because I remember that the... Uh, yeah, that's also a snail. It doesn't look quite the same, though. But, like, there's definitely some snail-like... I wonder if that's the implication. That these things are... Because, like, it would make sense, like, this this Eldritch-infested <laughs> Innsmouth fishing village would be full of not fish, but something that looks just enough like fish to fool an uh, unobservant. Hmm. Right, well, now we have to deal with all the fishmen up here who are quite mad at me. Surprise, and also... Motherf <laughs> oh, you! You... Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You win that one. You win that one. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> okay. Let's deal with the spooky ghosts. Oh, you have different weapons.
Oh, well, aren't we agile? Come at me, bro. You did not come at me well enough. Yo, yeah, it's uh, okay. I seem to have upset everyone. Oh god, it's another shark, man! Would you stop it with that? I hate the hitbox on that grab. That's a bullshit hitbox. A few moments later. No! No! Okay. I swear to God, if there's another one. Some kin cold blood. Well, that was definitely worth it. Okay, what are those things? Because that there looks vaguely like a face. And those look like arms. And what are those statues of? Hmm. And it really is just Barnacle City up in here. Like, my god. Okay. That's just like your opinion, man. No more shark people, please. Fish people. Oh, fish dogs. Okay. <laughs> they even have the dog noise when they die. Oh, cool. They're shaped after, uh, what are they called? Uh, the deep sea fish, the angler fish, like the, the really scary ones with like teeth that are 10 billion miles long. That reminds me, I haven't gotten a good look at the faces of these. Oh, boy. Yeah, okay. Okay, some very strongly worded opinions coming at me here. I don't know what that was, but don't do it. Listen, I hear you. I'm listening to what you're saying. I am acknowledging uh, your point of view. And I am expressing a stern and strong disagreement. Oh, more strongly worded opinions. With backup strongly worded opinions sitting on top of that ridge up there. Opinions... I suspect will be expressed in the form of ghosts. Would you look at that? I was right. Oh my f f you! And it's an anchor boy too. I told you, from soft. Oh, they think this is so f funny. They are laughing in their off. Well, they would be if they knew it happened to me. But oh, they are having a good time. At least that guy can't grab me. Oh, f yeah. you and your combo! Remember that? Remember that swipe combo I talked about earlier down in the well? Yeah, yeah, I'm still falling for it. Ah! It was that combo again. It was the it was the two hits and swipe again. Piece of, I dodged! I swear to God! I swear to God I dodged! I swear! I, I mean, clearly, like, clearly I didn't. I know. I know that if, like, if I didn't, I didn't click the button fast enough, so my iframes weren't there. But, oh. Oh, it feels like I did. Like, it feels so much like I did. Right, so fire just doesn't stagger anyone. I see.
Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, he's activated. He's already activated. Run! <clears throat> Come on. Go on. No blood echoes to recover, so... I'm reasonably sure he's not going to follow me up here. That's one of the flowers. Same kind of flower as... in the garden with the failures. I guess that exists outside of places where people are grown. Found a way pa- ah, ha, ha, ha. Hmm? Who spoke? Someone spoke. Okay. Now we have that. That's good. Oh. Who are you? I'm afraid I've made a bunch of things. Dude! Oh, I can hear the bell now. The beast hide assassin. He's after me. Again. And again. That would be the guy with the antlers, yeah. It never ends. Please, this village is the true secret. Testament to the old sins. It feeds this hunter's nightmare. Please, bring to an end the horror. So our forefathers sin. We hunters cannot bear their weight forever. It isn't fair. It just isn't fair. I could have given you some... I could have given you some freaking blood vials, dude. Oh, Simon. Is that his name? Choice weapon of Simon, one of the first healing church hunters. Simon despised firearms, and so the church workshop had this specially fashioned to his liking. The large curved blade serves as a bow when transformed. But aside from a few close friends, Simon was scoffed at for his choice of arms, so who would dare face the beasts with a measly bow? Well, I don't know. The way that the hunters do things canonically doesn't didn't work out that well, did it? So, inner chamber key. Does that mean I can go now and deal with that guy in his cell? Because I'd rather do that than get invaded by him when I'm trying to run away from a shark man or something. Yeah, I hear you. Oh, is that you? Hi! Interesting. Okay, so you don't uh, stagger for much, do you? Interesting behavior. There you are. Radar's testimony, huh? He looks like one of the, um, 
one of the red phantoms we fought in the uh well well look who's here welcome to my quarters i've never entertained a guest before are you going to kill me that's the idea after all you've done kill me as if to right your wrongs. No, not so much because of that. <laughs> Nothing changes. Such is the nature of man. Lut letter. That would be the weird weapon he was using. I've seen that one before. Phantoms, especially. It's the one where you hurt yourself in order to gain power on it or whatever. Dick. Guess we just move on. You are avenged, Simon, for however much that counts in a nightmare like this. Hey, buddy. So the Ghost Summoner and the Shark Man will be back out there. They didn't even kill the Shark Man ever, so... Shortcut? Yeah, from another side. Okay. I guess over here? And down the plank, I guess? Running on some rooftops. If there's a Shark Man up here, I'm gonna be very upset and unhappy. That's sand? What the hell is that? Is that another skeleton or one of those big fishes? <laughs> Whatever they are. Okay. No sharkmen on the roof, please. It wouldn't make sense. The roof wouldn't be able to take their weight. So you can't put sharkmen on the on the roof, FromSoft. You can't do it. You're not allowed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there's a room over there you can go into it. Okay. Can I kick that ladder down? No, I just descended. Okay. That's a wall. You have some kind of magic, don't you? You're gonna use it on me the moment I step up. Oh, hey, the ships! So, they were referenced to the fishing village. They were at the fishing village, in fact. Right. So that guy up there. It's gonna do magic at me. Yep. Well, okay. Hi. This seems like a place where a shark man could be. I am very paranoid about the shark men. Okay, 
So, shells again. Shells, mollusks, invertebrates, slugs, eggs. And this guy using those tools to scrape something out of the shell. Just for sustenance? Because it kind of feels like it's not. Your village sucks and so do you! Ugh. I don't want to go down there. Da oh my god, there's a- holy f sh The whole floor is just covered- oh my god. Okay, so that gets us back to the lamp. Good. This place stinks, and you people all stink, and I hate you, and I hate this. Oh, good grief. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, no, I don't like that. Oh no. I don't want to be down here. I don't want to be down here. Oh, I want n none of this. What's interesting to me is that these are all dead. Or, well... They seem to be, but I can't I help but feel that the moment I step into this mess. Yeah! Yep, 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 yep. Okay, right, so, okay, conch creatures. Right, okay, so, yeah, alright. Conch creatures. Conch women, specifically. Okay, so they're not a huge threat. Although I'm not about to see what happens when they get a hold of me. Yeesh. Right, okay, so... So there's that. There you are. Okay then. Beware of woman. Plural. Plural there, my friend. Okay! They are not all tied to their shells, I see. Shell optional, occasionally. We knew that, because we saw them hanging from the rafters, but... Don't trust this. Yep, 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 yep. Come at me. Come on. Ah, I see. Great. Okay, so I have to run in and deal with that. But that will expose me to like four or five of those. Okay. Ah. 
Okay. Survived that. I'm not hearing the singing, but this feels a lot like a trap of some kind. Bloody trousers, huh? It's not a giant slug out there, is it? Oh, tell me I don't have to jump down. I don't want to have to jump down. Oh, I have to jump down, don't I? Yeah, I definitely have to jump. Oh my god, okay. <sighs> Fine. So the singing thing is gonna be down there. The, la the first one I ran into and the only one I've run into so far I managed to get a surprise attack on it. There's a ladder there. There's a lever there. Ah. Shortcut. Shortcut, shortcut, shortcut. Yes, 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 yes. Hunter's dream, hunter's dream. Hunter's dream, away from this. Away from this. Okay, I haven't been verbalizing it much, but this place creeps me the f*** out. Elevator, take me down to... Paradise City where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Okay. You have a lovely singing voice, but I'm a little concerned about that unnatural echo. Oh, oh. There you are. I see you. Oh, there's more than one, isn't there? Oh, sh yeah. Oh! Sh Okay, so it inflicts frenzy, and it grabs you. Yeah, okay, right. Okay, oh, that's a lot of eyes. Because that hurts a lot. So, damage reduction, raise the stamina, I want the stamina. So right now I want frenzy resistance. I don't have think that's better than that, right? No. There we go. Oh, that reminds me. I should read. I found those bloodied trousers, didn't I? Bloodied foreign trousers. Braydor donned a compatriot's beastly scalp and hide while still moist with blood. Most of the blood stains on his hide were from this. Oh, is that the same as the uh, the uh, the scalp of a horrible cleric beast, indicating that Hunter Braydor, a healing church assassin, had killed a compatriot. Oh, it's a cleric beast, huh? Afterward, he wore his ally's own scalp and hid himself away deep below in a cell. The church provided him with a single soundless bell of death to ensure their secrets would be kept. Oh, indeed. Key to the inner chamber of the cell below the Grand Cathedral. The innermost chamber of the underground cell holds a lone madman. He wears a beast hide and rings a bell that emits no sound. Unending death awaits those who can hear the soundless bell. Yeah. <laughs> the demented hunter weapon brandished by Braidor, the healing church assassin. The blood letter assumes its true and terrifying form after it draws upon the blood uh, blood from the inner reaches of one's body and soul. This is the only effective means of expelling tainted blood, or so Braidor, isolated in his cell, continued to believe. Ugh. Okay, frenzy resistance. And let's try and see if we can backstab that damn thing. Oh, there's another one. Oh, piss and vinegar. I have a thing that cures or stops. Yeah, sedatives. And they it's it's like it's like the thing in the hunter's nightmare or in in the uh, uh the other nightmare. So many nightmares. Yeah, piss off. It's the same thing. Line of sight, and then they can... Huh.
Okay, that's one. Hi. No! Oh, you have a lot of mouths in there, don't you? No, come on! Oh, Frenzy's gonna kill me in just a second. Yeah, there it is. I hate grabs in this game. I hate grabs so much. And it feels like, because there's so much wind-up, like, because the, th the thing that they're doing that's nice to you is they put a lot of wind-up on the grabs so that you can see them coming. But then they also make the grabs just, like, track the sh** out of you. There we go. Okay. That's better. Is that a shark man? Okay. Nope. Lead elixir, huh? That is a magic man. Don't know if it's a ghost man or what. No, it's a spellcaster. Okay. So that's what's down there. Let's go back the other way. If it's a shark, I don't want to deal with it. Oh, it's the well! Because it's where we hurt. Uh, <laughs> oh, you can't shoot him down. Huh. I guess that's technically a shortcut. <laughs> if you want it to go back. <laughs> no. And there doesn't seem... Okay, they're hanging down from the rafters. Right, okay. So they're gonna drop down. Nonetheless, I still need that guy out of the way first. Yeah, I mean... They look a lot like the slugs. Like their body morphology, the way that their bodies are put together. The lower half, they look like they're like half human woman and then half that slug, basically. That mollusk or whatever the hell. Hey, a, a blood rock? Is that- oh, is that not the thing I need to upgrade a weapon fully? Yeah! Sweet! You seem to be alive. And praying. Okay, so I won't do that again. I wanted to check if they had, like, HP. Because if they do, then they're going to be enemies, and they're going to... And they're going to come from... Did you really have to give her cheeks like that? Uh, they're going to come from you at some point. But if they don't, then they're just... Nothings. And we can get a proper look. There's some H.R. Giger here. Like, Giger was more interested in the, like, the corruption of the human form by machine parts. That was kind of his horror style. But here... ...is like that same... ...visual aesthetic, kinda. But applied to... Much more biological. Okay, so whatever they're praying to is... Is it gonna be the big thing? The big flat thing? In the water? Okay, boss fight. This is definitely a boss fight. 
Like, 110% this is a boss fight. Like, right underneath the glowing moon against this. <sighs> okay. Right, then. Here we go. Oh, yeah. That's... That's... That's a big one. That's a large woman shape. But it's like it's burst open. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, is that all of her insights? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, he doesn't seem to want to fight, so... Oh. Okay. Right. Okay. So, you're tiny. I thought it was gonna be a big monster. But you're small. Which means you're gonna be dangerous. Hello. Hi. Uh, happy birthday? I, I wish it was under different circumstances. Yeah, hi, hello. But, uh, you know, you just gotta, gotta, gotta stay positive about- Okay! Okay! You can do that. That's a, that's a thing that you can do. Right. So, like that. And then, oh, I swipe, sweet, okay. All right. And then, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a big one. Right. We could just go get cake or something. I mean, it doesn't have to... It doesn't have to be this. Okay, so lightning doesn't seem to do anything extra here. Didn't think so. I don't, don't! Okay. You're gonna have a phase two, aren't ya? Okay. Your timings are a little annoying. Ah! And that's a little annoying, because it tracks. Oh, okay. You are agile. And I really like that. I love that for you. Like, I'm, I'm sure that's good. That's... You've practiced long and hard in the 12 seconds. Oh, my f God. It hits you on the back sweep, does it? Not enough to damage, but enough to stagger, which is annoying. And then the second swoop, which is big. Okay. So does the rope that connects it do damage, or can I dodge inside the radius of that? Right, and he can follow up with a second. So that's... I mean, I'm not wrong that he's attacking me with his placenta, right? Okay, so no more than two hits, I think. Oh, he has a lot of health. Okay, I can't just... I healed at exactly the wrong time. Okay, next time he does that, I'm gonna dodge inside it, because I want to know. And then... Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, that's a long sweep. I'm dead. Oh, I'm not dead.
Okay, can I parry you at all? Don't dodge backwards from that. Okay, I'm running out of blood vials real quick here. Why do you have that much health? Why do you have that? You shouldn't... What do you need it for? You're a baby. Nope, you cannot go inside the radius of that. Ah, piss off. Yeah. That was the shark timing thing again. It was that thing of like doing a move and then holding it, holding it, holding it, and then hitting you just as you come out of your dodge iframes. Okay. So Bolt doesn't do jack Might as well get rid of that. Anyway, um, hi, let me just, um... Someday you'll go through the rain Someday you'll feed on a tree frog It's all to you, the trial to survive Cursed Kin Hunter's Damp Blood Gem. Okay. For the day All right. Orphan, huh? Yeah, that's rough, buddy. Oh, okay. I thought I was outside the radius of it. So, you, my friend, and this makes sense since he's the last boss of the DLC, you seem like one of those optional motherfuckers. So, Koss. Cos was the creature that uh, Mikolaj was going on about then. Which, presumably, since he's the orphan of Cos, being a thing that's left over from it, that there would be Cos. And Cos is dead. Range? Mother... Whoa! Was that a combo move, or did I just get hit by an unlucky... Combin is that a thing he can do, or was that just unlucky? Okay. Yeah. Oh, and the sweep to finish it off. Okay. Big combo. This is cool. This is a really cool fight. Now I need to find out if I can parry him. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so that's possible. It kind of looks to me like also if you... If you get him with... Yeah, didn't... Uh, f stop talking while you're trying to fight, Skyn. Here's phase two. Oh, here is phase two indeed. It looks like if you're trying, if you, like, hit him with a bullet when he's trying to do one of those things, that destroys the, whatever the f thing is that he picked up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the moment he hit me with that drop attack... I knew he was gonna get, like, some- he was gonna do something else that was gonna get me out of a dodge. But I dodged anyway, because, like, that's a reflex. Okay, well. This might just be the rest of the stream tonight.
I wonder how the f*** I'm gonna edit this. <laughs> oh, the git good guy is getting a workout. grinding yet, uh, or actually, you know what, tell you what, uh, let's go grind, and do a few level ups. Exactly, seven level ups later. Well, my blood egg is out there now. That's the disadvantage of going to the water. <laughs> Ow. Okay. Yeah. Ow. Yeah. Oh, help. Stop manipulating my camera, you piece of sh It's extremely rude. Ah! Don't do that. Okay. This is not going terribly so far. Ah! Why did I say that? He still takes off about a third of my health with one attack, but... Yeah, I figured that was gonna blow me back, but at least I got some extra damage on him before we start. Oh, so that's what it is. Okay, that was good damage, but I hope I don't pay for it too much. Heal. Okay. Okay. Uh, nope. He can still kill me in one combo. This is the closest I've been? Okay. Okay, got the timing on that dodge.
I'll greed for this! Mamma mia! Ew. Oh my god. <laughs> the f The relief just went through my body. Seven levels. Just needed to level up seven times. That's all it took. Just needed to level up seven times. Okay, it dropped a parasite of some kind. Oh, it's a weapon. When the carcass of Koss washed, washed up on the coast, its insides were teeming with tiny parasites. Unlike any found in humans. This atypical weapon can only be clasped tight and swung, but a Koos parasite is said to stimulate phantasms inhabiting a lumen wood. Ah, so there is a connection. So there is a connection to the things. So Koss only washed up on the shore, huh? It barely existed here, but these people... I guess presumably they got infected by... by these parasites. And that's what turned them eventually towards worship of this... thing. Speaking of which, we can get a proper look at you now. So, tentacle face. Yeah, that's kind of par for the course. You look a lot like the thing in the cathedral underneath the upper church of a ward. Like, you, you have a lot of similarities in your sheet language, the way that you put together there. And you have a little shadow coming out of you over there as well. Deal with that in a second. Right now, I want a good long... So, a bit of a mermaid situation. Right. So, you, my friend look an awful lot like a bigger version of these things here. Like a more grown, mature version. So maybe these were never human. Maybe these are like your people who came up onto shore and made it with the humans who lived here, and that's what produced the fish beasts? Hmm. At least, if this is a riff on Shadow over Innsmouth, that would be my interpretation, is that these creatures would be like servants or something of this thing. Or of its species. So what's this thing? Ah, sweet child of course. Returned to the ocean. A bottomless curse. A bottomless sea. Accepting of all that there is and can be. And the moon is gone, and the sun is rising. Well, <laughs> after <laughs> many long hours and many hard attempts and seven, exactly, I believe exactly seven level ups. Yeah. We finally managed to destroy the orphan of cause and return it to the sea where it belongs. Because things from the deep ocean should not be on land. They're terrible. They need to stay down there. The ocean is evil. Uh, but, you know, if you want any complicated, interesting thoughts beyond that, you're just gonna have to wait. Future Skynes say stuff.
Because he's the smart guy, and I just hit things with a sharp thing until they die. Sometimes it takes a while, but I always get there in the end. Anyway, take it away, Future Skyne. Thanks, Past Skyne. So, I might as well start with the controversial hot take, I suppose. Mother Koss is not a god. But before I explain, we've got some ground to cover. The fishing village is the secret that Maria was guarding. It is the forbidden knowledge that she was protecting us from. And, as we find out when we find her beloved weapon at the bottom of the well, she was here, too. I take that to mean that whatever happened here is what shattered her moral self enough to make her abandon her weapon, abandon her principle against blood blades, and, eventually, abandon her life. What happened here, the secrets discovered here, are the reason for the experiments in the research hall, for the orphanage, for the charade of the healing church, for the school of menses, for Yahargul, the vile bloods, the executioners, all of it. It all begins here. Maria saw how it began and couldn't bear the knowledge of it, the guilt. Simon saw how it began and couldn't bear the injustice. Hey, so you know what's interesting? Parasites are interesting. They are an incredibly diverse part of the ecosystem. Some of them are functional predators, killing their hosts to consume them, but others are nearly benign, content to reside on a host and benefit while causing a tolerable amount of misery. And some of them are weird. Take the uh, Cordyceps, for example. It's a genus of fungi, a collection of species, almost all of whom parasitize arthropods. Perhaps the most famous of these is Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, which infects carpenter ants. Through a process that's not fully understood, it manipulates the mind of its host, forcing the ant to climb almost exactly 25 centimeters up from the ground, clamp its pincers onto a leaf, and hold on. Then, it consumes the ant's insides for sustenance, grows a fungus from the corpse, and uses the nutrition to spread its spores down from the leaf where they will infect other ants to begin the cycle all over again. Another parasite, Leucochloridium paradoxum, does something rather similar. Now, this is a flatworm, not a fungus, and what it does is its eggs are consumed by snails, and then they hatch into little worms and begin to manipulate the snail's behavior. The snail will climb up into open spaces. It'll stay out in the open and be vulnerable, and the worm itself climbs into the snail's antenna, where it mimics the look of a caterpillar in order to attract the attention of birds. The birds eat the snail, allowing the parasite to infect the bird in turn, and use the bird's feces to spread its eggs and start the life cycle all over again. Parasites manipulating their hosts to continue their own life cycles. It's freaky stuff, isn't it? Imagine if a parasite got into you and started making you believe crazy things that aren't real or engage in really dangerous behaviors that attract the attention of predators. <laughs> Now that's the stuff of nightmares. Anyway, there's a corpse on the beach in the fishing village. That's what Mother Koss is. A corpse. A flat, slimy puddle of flesh like a jellyfish that's washed ashore. The game treats this corpse with... No dignity or ceremony at all, really. It's in a desolate little cove with dirty sand and ugly rocks, and there she is. Just a flat pile of nothing lying there on the shore as mundane as a plastic bag. You can walk all over her if you want. She's really just another form of ground. There is absolutely nothing special about the corpse of Mother Koss. Except for one thing. She didn't die alone. Preserved and somehow surviving inside her is the orphan, who bursts from her womb, a malnourished skeleton clinging to its placenta, which has been pierced by a fish hook. It seems almost accidental, like Koss just ran afoul of a hook that wasn't meant for her, and when the wound metastasized into tumors, it just killed her. Whatever the case, she washes up on shore in the village and attracts the attention of, according to the wandering mumbler at the start of the village, Birkenwerth, 
whose scholars are excited by what they find. The discoveries they derive from that corpse. My word. You see, it turns out this corpse is no mere sea creature. No, no, no. It's a god. It's an old god. It's a being of immense cosmic power. Well, such a discovery must be followed up on. If elder gods exist, humanity must make contact with them, learn from them, become like them, and any sacrifice is worth this pursuit. Ethics and empathy must stand by the wayside. Even logic and reason must take a back seat. Any price is worth paying to do this, no matter how unreasonable. We must make contact with the old gods. It is so important to contact the old gods. And they do. Master Willem in Birkenwerth communes with Rom. The choir finds another rather cost-like creature to worship. And the school of Mensis attracts the attention of the Amygdala, which perch in Yarnum like spiders waiting for a meal, and occasionally snatch a bystander or two. After the discovery of Kos, humanity goes out of its way to attract the attention of greater creatures, even taking actions that go against their own safety and well-being. Wouldn't it be scary... If a parasite worked its way into your mind, if it made you believe insane things that aren't true and engage in dangerous behaviors that attract the attention of predators, wouldn't that be the stuff of nightmares? So, here's my hot take. Mother Koss is not a god. She's something, certainly powerful, but the game is incredibly deliberate in how it presents her. A drab, slimy corpse on a drab, slimy beach. As common as a jellyfish, as mundane as a plastic bag. You can walk all over her if you want to. Everywhere else in the game, the beasts and monsters, especially the cosmic and the supernatural, are presented with a sense of visual awe. Think of the creature under the orphanage, dramatically illuminated in the grand statue-filled arena of the Altar of Despair. Think of Vicar Amelia and her cutscene, or how the first cleric beast comes into view. Even vacuous Rom is framed in silver light on the surface of an ethereal, moonlit lake. But Kos? Kos is a damp slab of slime on a dirty beach in the middle of nowhere. Even the orphan, which gets its own cutscene, just crawls awkwardly from its mother's corpse, dragging viscera behind it, and then it sobs. And it isn't even epic, dramatic tragedy sobbing. It's just sad. The whole scene is sad. Drab and ugly and sad. The miseries of the hunter's nightmare begin with the murder of a mother. And it is the guilt of that sin and all of the sins that followed at the laboratory, the orphanage, the school of Mensis and Yahargul, that kills, well, it kills Maria, first of all, it kills Simon, ultimately, and even German seems to suffer under the weight of it. That's what Simon describes, too, the weight of that guilt, how unbearable it is. Guilt is the weight that pulls hunters into the nightmare. We saw it with Ludwig, we saw it with Maria, the insane church assassin Brador wouldn't stop going on about it, and we will see it in the next episode as well. Back, way back in the very beginning of Bloodborne, when we first arrive in Yarnum, we receive a transfusion of blood. As the sullied bandages we wear at the start of the game say, a faint memory recalls blood ministration, involving the transfusion of unknown blood. Not long after, the nightmare began. We take the blood of Yarnum, and we begin to see things that weren't there before. We see a blood-soaked werewolf reaching out to us, which is driven back by fire. We see horrible little creatures crawling all over us. We find ourselves pulled inexorably into a hunter's dream. And as we gain insight, insight which is explicitly the same as madness in Yarnum, we see more and more things. We see dolls come to life. We see monsters on the walls. We see the moon descend onto the earth and crush us like a bug. And the more we learn about Yarnum and its lore and its history, the more deranged our own thinking becomes. Oh, no, yeah, it makes sense that someone would operate more eyes into the inside of their own head because that's how you can see God. Aliens are real and we need to talk to them. So here's my crackpot theory. 
The parasites inside Kos have a life cycle. They begin their life in whatever her species is, where they multiply, and make her swim from the deep sea that is her home closer to the surface. Close enough for human hooks to snag her. Humans find the corpse and find the parasites, and all of a sudden, humans discover a desperate and driving need to see God. They line their brains with eyes, they sacrifice hundreds in blood rituals, they engage in all kinds of insane behaviors, all designed to attract the attention of greater beings. Are these beings gods? Well, that might be the only human word that describes them, but what if they're just creatures, animals? They are to us as incomprehensible and transcendent as we are to ants, but ultimately we are just creatures, creatures which can get parasites. So the cost parasite uses humans as a halfway point, a staging ground in their life cycle to reach the host that they really want, old gods. Of course, though, for that to be true, for there to be a life cycle, we would have to have some evidence that Yarnum isn't the first time that this has happened. There would have to be some previous civilization before it that was also obsessed with old gods and desperately trying to catch their attention, or perhaps another civilization which curiously suffered almost exactly the same kind of cataclysmic beast plague that resulted from the parasites being discovered in Yarnum. That would be an indication that what happened in Yarnum isn't unique, but merely a repeating pattern caused by something. We are drawn into the madness of the hunt when we receive a transfusion of tainted Yarnum blood. Almost as though the delusions inflicted by the parasite, whatever chemicals it uses to mind control its victims, are bloodborne. All of which drifts perhaps a little bit far away from the boss that I just spent five hours fighting. And I don't think that the Parasites Drove Humanity Crazy reading is the only reading of this area or this boss. Bloodborne is a game that is intensely preoccupied with motherhood, with birth trauma and the cycles of violence and pain that haunt us throughout our lives. We are born of the blood, made men by the blood, undone by the blood. The lady in white with her womb torn out, the crying infant always just out of earshot, the one reborn, and yes, the orphan crawling into life from Koss's dead body. The mumbling guy at the start of the fishing village says it explicitly, lay the curse of blood upon them and their children and their children's children forevermore. Each wretched birth will plunge each child into a lifetime of misery. He is literally cursing you with cycles of violence and generational trauma. And from that perspective, the orphan's character design makes devilish sense. It picks up the hook that ended its mother's life and uses it to perpetuate violence on us, to pass its suffering on. The placenta that was meant to nourish it instead becomes a tumorous source of pain. Kos passes the violence and trauma that was done to her down to her child, who passes it into the world in turn. The hunter's nightmare revolves around these never-ending cycles of recurring violence. It revolves around suffering that begets suffering. The hunters in here are stuck in it like Groundhog Day, murdering beasts and being murdered, wading through literal rivers of blood and past mountains of corpses, and nobody more exemplifies the way that cycles of violence turn people into monsters than Ludwig and his awful fate. From that perspective, the murder of Koss is the original sin, the inciting act of violence from whence sprang the cycle of suffering that the hunters are going through. And so, in confronting the orphan, the avatar of Koss's suffering and laying it to rest, we begin to push back against the pressure to repeat the cycle. Now, the only mechanical way that Bloodborne has to express pushing back against something is, well, with ultraviolence, which muddies the metaphor a little bit, but, you know, video games. But I want to stress that it doesn't have to be either the cycles of violence reading or the crazy parasite conspiracy. It can be both, or it can be neither of them. Art can mean many different things all at the same time, and different readings can work on different levels, and they can work for different people and different experiences. And in the next episode, we will explore a different reading, I think. 
But personally, I think the parasite theory fits. Because Bloodborne is very much a cosmic horror story. And what's terrifying about cosmic horror is that it is an existential horror. It is the horror of realizing that we are not special. That we exist as motes of dust floating in an uncaring, amoral universe. Full of creatures far greater than us, which our tiny human minds will never comprehend. Cycles and systems and forces which will casually subvert our humanity, overthrow our civilizations, or wipe us out entirely. And when we're gone, nothing of consequence will have changed. The knowledge of this meaninglessness, this indifference, the pointlessness of all our human aspirations drives cosmic horror protagonists mad. So to think that Yarnum and the Pithumerian dungeons and the land of Loran, whatever it was, that the healing church, the choir, the school of menses, Birgenwerth, the vile bloods, the executioners, all of the suffering of the research laboratory, the beast plagues, all this pomp and circumstance, all this drama, all this trauma, all these sculptures, all this horror, hope and harrowing, Gascoigne and his children, Maria and her suicide, Jahargul and its rituals, Alfred, Amelia and the witch of Hemmick, everything we've been through everything we've talked about all this shit that was supposed to mean something to think that all of that is nothing but the middle stage in the life cycle of a parasite that isn't even interested in infecting us that reads like cosmic horror to me cos is the carpenter ant spreading spores for the cordyceps we are the snail, begging the bird to eat us, and we will be excreted with a ch to serve as bait and start the whole thing over again. Hey, thank you very much for watching another episode of The Boss Designs of Bloodborne, and uh, yeah, this one got a little out of control. <laughs> I know that there are probably more established, lore-tied readings of Bloodborne where people can point to 10 or 15 item descriptions that I haven't seen that totally contradict this entire video. But part of the point of a blind run, a blind reading, is to work with incomplete information. And the fun of working with incomplete information is that it makes all kinds of interesting things possible that maybe you can't do if you have to include and account for every single scattered piece of evidence. Unless, of course, it turns out that there's already like six Vati Vijaya videos laying this exact idea out with way more evidence, and I'm just doing baby's first Bloodborne theory over here. You never know. I didn't get to touch on that hanging corpse that looks like the Hunter Rune in this video. It was like, it was long enough already, but I think maybe I can work it into the next video, actually. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, then I would very much appreciate a like and maybe a comment or subscribe. There was five hours of footage that went into this video, and three hours of that was just fighting the orphan. That montage took a while to put together. So, if you want to see all five unedited hours of that fight, then that footage is available over on my Let's Play channel, along with Let's Plays of Hollow Knight, Mass Effect 2, and I recently started up Final Fantasy XIV as well. So, you know, subscribe over there. I have a Patreon, where there's some rewards if you want them. I have a little merchandise store, and I have a tip jar. If you want to use any of them, that's very kind of you, and it'll help me pay my rent and my expenses, and generally finance me spending 14 hours editing 5 hours of Bloodborne footage into weird crackpot theories like this one. If you're not in a position to be able to support the channel directly, though, please don't worry about it. It is more than enough that you have watched the video this frickin' far. Anyway... Thank you very much for watching. Remember to wear a mask where it's appropriate and wash your hands often. Take the vaccine when you can. I got my first shot a couple of days ago, actually. And try to act with solidarity towards those who are worse off than yourself. Mm -hmm.